Hey everyone, it's Trump Pimp. Uh, I know it's been a long time, time since I've uploaded anything and I feel terrible about it. Um, I've actually had this video that I'm about to show you pre-recorded for quite a while. And uh, I've just been working on an intro that I was gonna I was gonna make for my channel, but there have been some complications, and I'm just gonna say screw it, I'll do it later, and I just want to upload this video for you guys. So yeah, this has been recorded for a while. I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, before we get started, I think I'm gonna introduce you or show you my cat Dodge because he's just meowing at my door, dying to be let in. He's actually been like too loving of a cat lately. Say hi, kitty. Hey, hey, look up. Oh well, okay, there he is. Alright, let's get started. Now I'm about to show you what a few of you have asked for, and that's a tutorial for these uh, mini arrows that are they're more advanced than the ones that I posted already, being in that they're made of two dowels and they have actual needles in the end. And the benefits of these are they're lighter, they fly further, they can be more accurate, and of course they have needles in the end, and needles go in more surfaces, they penetrate better, and they don't dull as quickly. And those are for the bows for the that I put posted already actually how to make them so they work for either of these bows and let's get started with the stuff you'll need first of all a common pen and your mini hand drill uh, you'll need a drill bit that's about one millimeter maybe a little bit less so go to a hobby store you'll be able to, be able to find them there um, at least most hobby stores anyway just tell me you need a one millimeter drill bit and you'll also need a, uh, a small sewing needle let me see if I can get it into focus I actually got a new camera, so it, it'll work a lot better now and you'll be able to see more. You also need a small paper clip and a, an index card. Doesn't matter what size, some super glue, and your Zacto knife or any crafting blade with a uh, mini saw blade on it. It's got about 32 teeth per inch. Uh, any uh, multi purpose glue, scissors, a ruler and some mini wood dowels. These are kind of hard to find nowadays. You used to be able to get them in crafting stores, but now you actually have to go online. Uh, look up mini wood dowels, and once you find them, they should look like this, or they could be another brand, I'm not sure. But there's 250 of them in a bag in this one, and the dimensions are 5 64ths of an inch by 2 and 5 8 inches, or 0.2 by 6.67 centimeters. So those, the mini dowels should be about that big. They could be a little bit bigger. Makes it a little easier on you, but around that size. And if you have a Dremel, it'll help out a lot. So get that out if you have one. Uh, that's everything I can see, so let's start with step one. For step one, all you're going to need is your two mini dowels. Uh, make sure they're pretty round, round as possible on both ends. Make sure that they're strong by bending them slightly in each direction. You don't want to have any cracks in them. And you'll need your mini drill, your hand drill, and your Dremel if you have one. So what you're going to do is, with your one millimeter or less, just uh, around one millimeter, try to not make them too small. Anyway, I'll just say one millimeter. So your one millimeter drill bit, you're going to start a hole on either end of the mini dowel and begin to drill it. Make sure it's in the center of the dowel as much as possible. And yeah, happy drilling. If you have a Dremel, you can just start out a little hole and then switch to the Dremel, but if you don't, you can just keep on doing this until you get a, a hole about one centimeter deep. So let me just get a hole started here. Alright, now I'm going to switch over to the Dremel. And now I can do this about five to ten times faster than if I were just using the hand drill. Oh, there's the other one. When you're drilling with the Dremel, you want to kind of spin the dowel a little bit. That way it won't go in one direction and it won't just go out the end of, or the side of the uh, dowel.
All right, so that's about one centimeter. Now what you need to do is do that to the other dowel. And on one of the dowels, make two holes, not just one. So I'll see you in the next step. I've got all three holes drilled, and this is what they should look like once you're done. If I can get that close enough. The hole should be right in the middle, and there should not be any hole going out the side of the dowel. As you can see, there is not here. And so now what you're going to need to do is get your paper clip and your, actually I didn't mention you needed these, uh, get some kind of wire cutters. Diagonal cutters work as well. These are kind of pliers combined with wire cutters. And you also need your super glue. And I recommend putting some paper on the surface you're working on, unless you want to get super glue all, all over your desk and your hands and, you know, have to take a bath in some uh, nail polish remover. Anyway, all right, so we got super glue. And what you're going to do is take your paper clip and unfold it. Try not to bend the straight part of the paper clip because that needs to be straight. So just unfold it at the bends. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your wire cutters and cut off the bent parts. So what you're going to have left is a straight piece of paper clip. Alright, so now what you're going to do is get your dowels and your super glue. Make sure your super glue is not clogged, which mine was, so I had to unclog it with this thing. Now i got to get it out. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use pliers I bought. Oh, wow. There we go. That works. Okay, so now get your super glue your paper clip rod. Oh great, I'm getting super glue all over, all over me. Okay, and now put super glue on half of the paper clip rod. Move that over there. Alright, and now pick any dowel and put it in one of the holes and push it down as far as it will go. Try not to get super glue on your hands in doing so. All right. Now you should have a little bubble at the end of your uh, dowel. If you don't, just add a little bit of super glue, and then just uh, put your other super glue or put your other dowel on. Actually, no. First, put some super glue back on the uh, paper clip, and now put your dowel on, and then push them together. If it's too, if the paper clip is too long and they don't combine, then you can just trim it and then try it again. So once you're done with that, it should look like this, one combined shaft, and we'll start on the next step. This step is fairly simple, but it can get annoying because it's kind of hard to do sometimes, but what you'll need is your, um, your crafting blade, or if you have a Dremel, you can use that with the smaller, uh, thinner red cutting bit. I've actually never used that to do this before, so that'll be a first, but it should work out pretty well. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the side of the, uh, the arrow shaft that does not have the hole. So as you can see, this one doesn't have the hole. So what you're going to do is you're just going to, you're going to saw a line through the middle of the shaft. It doesn't matter what direction you, you saw it in at this point. So just saw a line right down the middle. Try not to make it near the edge because if you do, that could cause some complications later on. So with the mini saw, you're just going to start out slow and just work your way back and forth until you get a groove, and then you can go a little bit faster. But if you have a Dremel, it's pretty easy. You just turn it on and then hit the center and just start sawing away. And it is making the notch a little bit wide, so I'm going to actually finish with the, the uh, knife. But it is a great way to start out the groove so you don't have to sit there trying forever to start it out. Alright, so I finished my groove. And this is what mine looks like. It's really wide though. Try not to make it so wide when you uh, use your Dremel if you do. 
try to make it just start a groove and then finish it off with the, uh, the saw blade. It should be just a little bit wider than this saw blade actually. So, alright, now you're ready for your next step. In this step we're going to be making our arrow veins. Uh, those are the little guiding thingies on the, on the arrow. Um, unfortunately, in my opinion, this is the most annoying part because you have to be so precise and it takes a while. So what I did is I made a sheet of arrow veins. There are 12 here. And what I'll be doing is I'll be selling them for probably about $5 each. So send me a message to my YouTube inbox if you want to, you know, get hooked up. If you don't want to draw all these arrow vein sets, if you want to make a bunch of arrows, it makes it a lot easier. So for this step, what you're going to need is a ruler, your index card, your pen, um, your crafting blade, scissors, and glue. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is drawing them. I'll show you a, a uh, an enlarged image of the veins with the dimensions on it once I'm done, so you guys can see that. But first, make a straight line on your index card, two centimeters long. Once you do that, go from the left side, the left end of the uh, straight line, and go six millimeters from the left and draw a little line going up. That line going up is going to be about six millimeters high. And if I said centimeters on the, from the left, I meant millimeters. So six millimeters high, and then on the very left, draw a straight line going up four millimeters high. Once you draw those two lines, connect them and connect it to the, the uh, right side. So it's all one shape. Once you do that, go on the bottom, flip it like this and go to the bottom of the vein. And draw a line continuing the bottom line, three millimeters long. Once you do that, draw another two, cent two centimeter line. Try to make it parallel to the first one. Then flip it over and draw your vein again, mirroring the first one. You don't want to do it from the left this time, you want to do it from the right. So six millimeters from the right. going straight up six millimeters. And then another line of course on the right, four millimeters high. And then connect the lines again. This one may be a little sloppy because I'm trying to hurry up to show you guys, but on the sheet that I have for sale, it, they're a lot better. They're all great looking. Alright, so then once you have your vein, what you need to do is get your scissors and cut it out. Once you cut it out, take your crafting blade, or it's pretty sharp, so if you don't have a saw blade, I would use a, a ruler, that works too. All you need is something flat to fold your arrow vein over. So put it, fold your arrow veins over on the lines as best as you can. And what this does, it makes the fold uh, more concise so it'll fit around the arrow better. So fold it over both lines, just the two centimeter ones, don't fold it any other way. And flatten it. And when you're done, it should look like that. Alright, so now what you do is you take your glue and your arrow shaft and you find the end that does not have the hole on it. So this side doesn't have the hole, it has a notch. So find that notched side, put some glue on down the middle of your arrow vein. If I can get this glue to cooperate. Alright. So don't like soak the glue, but don't be afraid to put enough on. You can always just wipe it off if there's too much. So 
So just a small line down the middle, as you can see. And then on the notched side, what you need to do is place place the arrow vein facing down, about a quarter inch down the uh, shaft, and make sure that the notch is going sideways as compared to your arrow vein. So put it on and then kind of uh, smooth out the folds so it's round around the arrow shaft, not like blocky, like you folded it. So it should look like that, if I can get the correct hand angle. I just put it in my hand like this to get it to focus better. So you see the, the uh, notch is going sideways and the, the V of the vein is going up. So yeah, now you're ready for your last step. We're on our last step. Are you guys excited? I know I am because I don't want to film this anymore. Anyway, um, what you're going to need is your super glue, your arrow that you've done, or made so far, and your small needle, something to super glue on unless you want to get super glue everywhere, and your wire cutters. It's a really simple step. It's easy. All you got to do is cut your, uh, the needle, the eye of the needle off. Once you do that, put it in your arrow in the hole to uh, see how far in it goes. And yes, I know, that's what she said. Anyway, um, you don't want it to be too long. Like if it's, if it's that long, it's going to go like when you shoot it at something, it might snap off. So I would say no more than half an inch for the length of the needle when it's in the arrow. So I'm going to trim that up. Yeah, it looks better. So, I don't know if that's in the camera right now, but it should be about that long because you don't want it to snap off. So once you have it at the proper length, get your super glue and just put super glue all over the needle, except for the part where you're holding it because you don't want to glue, you know, glue your freaking fingers together. So it would suck. You'd have to dip them in a nail polish remover. So anyway, once you get super glue on it, just put your needle in the arrow shaft, or in the arrow at this point, and then just put a little super glue on the end, on the tip. So yeah, it'll look like that when you're done. Hopefully that's in focus. And then you just set it down to dry and we're ready to shoot it. Once your arrows are dry, or your arrow, however many you made, you can just take either bow that I showed you how to make, either this one, which I prefer, or this one. This one's easier, this one's stronger. So once you do that, just get your bow, and you string it, and then you just get something to shoot at, and you go like that. I happen to have four of them right now, so I'm just going to keep shooting the box because it's fun. And I will be doing a range test for this bow and arrow pretty soon. Be showing you guys how far it shoots on the street or something. So, yeah, there we go. Pretty awesome little arrows. And they shoot pretty strong, pretty fast with this thing. So, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry it took so long. Uh, been busy with a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, please subscribe and tell your friends and everything. And uh, I'll keep posting stuff. So, see you next time.